This one is one that I think is not spoken about a lot, but it's actually putting the care of your hair in someone else's hands. Ooh, are you saying we shouldn't go to the stylist or the braiders? In this video, I just want to share 10 reasons why your hair is not growing. You've been natural forever. You've done all the things right according to what you think, according to YouTube University, and yet you are at a plateau. You just have not seen length for the longest time. You're not retaining length for some reason. Your hair just is at the same length, shorter length. Bra strap length, what have you. This video is for you and I think some of the things I'll be discussing in this video could actually help take you to the next level. If you're interested, keep watching. As we know, long hair, length retention, growing your natural hair is mainly about preventing breakage. Length retention issues are usually the reasons why a lot of us do not see any progress in the length of our hair. Some of us call it hair growth, right? My hair is not growing. In this video, I'm going to talk about the things that may be impeding that progress, some things that may be causing your hair to break, okay? And like I said, the main reason a lot of us are not seeing length is because the hair is breaking. So let's get into some of the reasons why your hair may just be stagnant. The first thing is you haven't settled on what type of natural you want to be. You're hopping around from a straight natural to the blow dry natural to the braided natural to the twisted natural, wash and go natural, okay, knotless braids, wigs, whatever, cornrows. I think it's it's a narrative that has been pushed out there that black women change their hair like that. And yeah, a lot of us do it, even I have done it for years. However, just because our hair or our culture involves a lot of styling or our forcey kinky or coily hair can do a lot of styles does not mean we actually have to do them. The process of styling our hair actually brings a lot of breakage um, with it. And in recent times, I have decided to actually stick to one style. I'm a twisted natural, so I twist my hair the majority of the time. If I am going to venture out, maybe I'll add synthetic hair to go on holiday, Maybe I'll have a wig on or do some crochet in winter. Other than that, I will not be experimenting anymore with anything. That allows me to really just adopt a boring routine, quote unquote boring, right? A lot of people call it boring. Oh my gosh, you're in twists the whole time. Like, oh, how do you style your hair? Like, why are you not enjoying your hair? Because it's always protected. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. Just because my hair is in twist does not mean I'm not enjoying it. I absolutely enjoy my hair in mini twists. Particularly with twists, like you can actually style your hair in so many ways while in the twist. So find a style, stick with it. Find the type of natural you want to be, stick with it. Especially when you're first starting trying to figure this out. Don't hop around, don't try a few things. Just find what you like and stay with it for a little bit before you jump onto the next. That would just get you into a routine of caring for for your hair in a certain way, right? The moisture, the you know the ends, you know the protein, the washing, the scalp care. All that becomes very much routine. It becomes like a broken record. Today, tomorrow, same thing and same thing. And once you do that a few times, it becomes part of you, and that's when the growth really starts to show up, or the length retention, I should say. The next one is trend following. Stop it. Next trend, you're on it. Next product, you're reviewing it. Next this, you're like, the trends just set you back. You're trying this, you're trying that. You're just traumatizing the hair. Just leave the hair alone. I promise you, some of these things that we try on our hair, we should have never done. So I think not following trends is probably something that you need to stop if you find that your hair has plateaued. Moisture. <laughs> need I say moisture? If you haven't mastered moisture, we can't even start to talk about anything else. Moisture is key to length retention, softens the hair, keeps the hair healthy, supple, 
manageable, hydrated, you name it. Moisture is key. I've done so many videos on moisture. Girl, if you're a subscriber of mine, you should have the softest, most moisturized hair in the room. Like, yeah, we're here for moisture. Um, but yeah, if you're struggling with moisture, then really zone in on it. Try to include a humectant. Find a sealant that really works for you. Find a style that really preserves that moisture. For me, it's twists and the ends tucked in. Game changing. Game changing. Your detangling techniques aren't quite right. Too rough. Too impatient. Using excessive use of tools or just using tools, in my opinion, right? Uh, low quality tools like... If your detangling routine is not spot on, all the length that you gain from the protective style, from the patients, from your treatments, whatever, down the drain. Detangling is where you retain the length. So master detangling. I've already briefly spoken about protective styles, but protective styles do exactly that. They protect the hair from the elements, from breakage, from tangles, from sun, from dirt. I mean, if you're not protective styling and you're trying to grow your hair or, you know, retain lots of length, I don't know. I don't know how that's working. But protective styles are proven. Over years, protective styles work. Your ends are unhealthy. So this is something that happened to me a few years ago where I was just seeing lots of breakage, right? Little tiny hairs everywhere and my ends were actually the issue. Lots of single strand knots, lots of dryness. If you've got split ends at the ends there, they'll just be breaking off and breaking off and breaking off. So you need to actually go in and trim the hair a little bit above the split end to allow it to actually start retaining its length. Single strand knots for me in excessive amounts, particularly, they actually cause a setback for me because when I go into detangle, they kind of cause friction and pull and tug on my hair and cause breakage, actually sometimes shedding. So I don't like single strand knots, okay? I have them in my hair at any given time, but they're very minimum, all right? So I keep them at a level that I can manage personally. Protein, you haven't included protein in your routine. Protein goes to fill in the gaps in our hair to strengthen it. Girl, you need yourself some protein, okay? I've done so many videos about being protein sensitive, what products work best for protein sensitive hair what products are what i consider true proteins okay that will really nourish the hair and strengthen the hair go check those videos out if you're not including protein in your routine that's probably why your hair is breaking and you're not retaining your length gentle handling of the hair sometimes we think that the only time that you have potential to break the hair is when we detangle but if your general handling of your hair is not gentle like if you're styling it putting it in a bun, using accessories that are really gentle and you're rough with it and you pull at it, you tug at it. It doesn't like that. Handle your hair gently. This one is one that I think is not spoken about a lot, but it's actually putting the care of your hair in someone else's hands. Ooh, are you saying we shouldn't go to the stylist or the braiders? I'm not saying that if you trust them, if they've got a track record of success, if you've had them for years and they've been beneficial, then of course this doesn't apply. But to someone that's going to a hairdresser or a salon where, I mean, they trim your hair without permission, they trim lots of inches without consulting with you, they handle your hair roughly, they blow dry your hair roughly and break your hair. Like if the person that's looking after your hair on a routine is not you, and the person that's doing it is not doing right. We're not going anywhere. Finally, scalp issues. And this one is one that is a problem sometimes, but not as much as the length retention, you know, habits. So some of us actually have got, you know, inflamed scalps. Some of us have got scalp conditions. Some of us have got excessive shedding, excessive dandruff, psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis. Like there's a lot that could be happening on, on your scalp or at the scalp level that's actually not growing your, your hair as fast or at the same quality, at the, at the highest quality that it could be growing. And for that, see a professional. Seek professional help. Go to a trichologist. Go to a cosmetologist. 
go to a dermatologist, consult someone that's going to school to study the hair. That way you can tick certain boxes and say, okay, the scalp is actually good. It has to be something else. Or, oh, hold on, the scalp is not okay. Let's fix that. Because it might actually be not necessarily the length retention. It might be a problem at the scalp. This is rarely the case. Not rarely, but not as common, but it's definitely something to look into. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was beneficial. Do share your stories on what you did to get yourself from the plateau to the next level. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.